It was such a simple idea. Pierre de Coubertin put down his pen one day and said, What we need is a giant sports day, like at school, but for all the world. And he got it, too, in Athens and then Paris. He thought it was wonderful, and it was. A lot better than at my school. Then, years later, the Dutch had a go. They planned it all and only then realised they hadn't actually told the Queen. And Wilhelmina was a frosty old bird and she stayed away. But had she gone along, she would have seen Big Bobby Pierce, an Australian whose real name was Harry, although I haven't got time to go into that now. Big Bob was winning the rowing in 1928 when, ahead of him, he saw a line of ducks. Some people say Ossies aren't subtle, but Bob stopped his boat and let the ducks pass. To be fair, the next man, a Frenchman, may never have seen the ducks, and he ploughed through them and he went into the lead. But luck is with the kind-hearted, and Pierce won by 20 lengths, which was a record. After that, Olympic champion, he wanted to row at Henley, but the British wouldn't let him. Bob was a carpenter, and a carpenter wasn't a gentleman, and that wouldn't do at all. When the games went back to Paris, a lot of people didn't realise they were even taking part. Margaret Ives just thought she was having a round of golf. She won the gold for America, although well, she died without ever realising it. Still, it brought her happiness because she met a witty American socialite called Finley Dunn, who'd just gone to watch and obviously had a weakness for women in big white dresses. There are crazy stories galore about the Olympics, and I could keep you all day by telling you more. But in case you're interested, there's an excellent book called The Olympics 50 Craziest Stories. Who knows, you may even be in it. <laughs>